Ihr Friends of Rödel und Partner, dear listeners, willkommen, bienvenido, bienvenue, welcome. Welcome to Tax Unplugged, Podcast Series by Rödel und Partner. Rödel und Partner is an international and multidisciplinary advisory firm with German origin in tax, audit and law. My name is Florian Hase. I'm the host of this podcast series. I invite you to take a closer look at our firm. I will be talking to great colleagues from all over the world, more than 5,000 employees, more than 100 offices in roughly 50 countries. These figures are important because they define our strengths and global coverage. But after all, they are only figures. The aim of the series, however, is to introduce you to the people, the people behind the services we offer and the people that are united in achieving the best results for our clients. And with me today is George Maynard from our Nairobi office in Kenya. Welcome, George. Thank you, Florian. George, to start off, tell me, what's that you are doing at Rödel and Partner? I am part of the 21 colleagues uh, here in Nairobi. I specifically handle tax advisory, tax compliance, and keeping services. I think our listeners will particularly be interested in learning how we have structured our business and our services in Kenya. Uh, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about this first, but also maybe a little bit more about the kind of services we offer in general, uh, and then maybe with a special focus on tax. This office was actually officially opened uh, in the year 2016. I have been here as long as the office was officially opened. We are 21 colleagues. We provide both legal, uh, that is legal commercial uh, services. So within legal, you, we have labor, employment issues, general commercial litigation. And then we also have um, a tax advisory team where we provide not just also tax advisory, but also tax compliance. We have Uh, specialty areas such as transfer pricing, which is an interesting subject in this side of the world, customs advisory, customs litigation, and then we also have a small team that support our clients with uh, bookkeeping and payroll support services. So we're able to support clients, especially when it comes to setting up all the way, setting up general compliance, inbound and even outbound tax advisory issues, support with tax litigation. Our revenue authority is very aggressive when it comes to collection and tax disputes. So we support clients holding their hands during the disputes all the way to the higher courts. We are a family-owned business ourselves. And other than all of our competitors, we are not a network or a franchise system in other countries, but we have our own offices. So in Kenya from 2016 onwards, which is good and which is something our clients are really looking for. When German companies or European companies want to set up a subsidiary in Kenya. From your perspective and experience, what are the services that our clients need most first? It's important for them to understand the legal landscape in Kenya, which of course comes hand in hand with tax environment, because it's important for them to understand the kind of setups that they can have here. We always provide that kind of setup advice. Traditionally, we have two kinds of setups. That is, you could have a subsidiary, a limited company, and then a branch. So it can be a branch of the, the German holding uh, entity here in Kenya. But of course, we have the newer version that is a, a limited liability partnership arrangement, which it's also important for the clients to understand that it tends to be transparent for tax purposes. Most clients always would like to be advised on that. Secondly is uh, to set up the entity itself, a legal entity that they choose to go for or we advise based on the regulations. So we are able to support in setting up the entity, tax registration, all the way issues on employment. And then thereafter, uh, they require support on ongoing tax compliance, tax matters, accounting. Some of the German companies setting up here are also working with other sub-distributors. So they may not necessarily have a legal form. Type of service they require would be advisories on uh, import taxes, import duties that are applicable on the products because they tend not to set up manufacturing setups here. They also tend to require support in areas of cross-border transactions such as transfer pricing. So we would be able to support them to localize the transfer pricing policies that they have. There are few nuances, there are few issues that are very special to Kenya that 
that we tend to help them so that they're, they're in compliance with uh, our local regulations. Basically starts with bread and butter business, as we call it, and then as it develops over time and with the client up to very specialized topics. So that's very interesting. The investment climate in Kenya, I mean, from a German perspective, if you look into the newspaper, obviously South Africa plays a very central role. Not so much in that regard as known from Kenya. Can you let us know what European companies can expect in Kenya when they invest? If you look at Africa itself as a continent, there's that big division in terms of what you call there's a northern part and then there's a southern part where South Africa is. The western part you find the big players like Nigeria. So if you come to the eastern part of Africa, Kenya is there and Kenya is actually the biggest economy in East and Central Africa. So that is the first advantage that Kenya gives any German company. When you want to target the larger Eastern African region, Kenya is always the entry point. So most of the companies would come in and then set up an entity in Kenya. And then you have uh, branches in Uganda, Tanzania, Congo, Sudan, that is Southern Sudan. All these countries form, that is including Rwanda and uh, Burundi. So they form the, the East African community. Within the East African community, we have common external tariffs that are applicable. And then also we have common internal tariffs. So the moment you get into Kenya and let's say you're in the, in the business of distributing products or even you set up a manufacturing entity in Kenya, you tend to enjoy that kind of the incentives available throughout the region. And you have access to a population of about 400 million plus. If you are to include also even Ethiopia, you're talking of a, a 500 million plus market that is available. And that is why a lot of companies also coming through Kenya. Is that only a custom advantage or also a tax advantage? More of a custom advantage. So when you talk about income taxes, so the VAT income taxes, we don't have like what you may have in Europe, like a, a uniform rate, eh? let's say through the European Union. It is quite specific to each country and there are a lot of negotiations that involve. What I wanted to mention is that in addition to that common market that you have access to, we have the special economic zones. If you set up a manufacturing plant within these zones, of course, there's a whole process of applying which we can walk you through. So there are certain tax incentives that have been put in place so that investors can actually recoup their initial investment. So you'll find zero corporation taxes. There are some specific payments that do not have VAT. So th that is one thing that an investor can actually look into when determining whether then to invest in Kenya. In Kenya, we are blessed with a highly learned, knowledgeable young population that you may not find in many places in the world. Most of the German companies, when they set up here, putting the best, whether engineers, whether you want doctors, whatever it is, they are available with best education. Is that also true for tax advisors? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So thanks for this description of the investment climate in general. Talking about taxes more specifically, what would you say are the maybe three key things an investor should know tax-wise when he wants to go to Kenya? The first thing, which I think is uh, pretty obvious, but it's always important to emphasize it. It is important for an investor to get it right from day one. Priority should be given to the basics such as taxation. Secondly, if you, you are engaged in cross-border transactions. It's important that you put in place all the agreements, you get them done and in compliance with the local regulations because the tax authority here can be quite aggressive and of course you don't want to have problems with that. And then uh, the third aspect I'd say is to be aware of the setup that you need to have. So best thing is to call you first before deciding or investing anything. Just one follow-up question. What is the, the level Level of tax certainty, of legal certainty in, in, in Kenya with respect to tax law. So is there a high discretion of the tax authorities because it's common law background, it is not so much written statutes, but more case law, or are there also very strict written rules? Our tax regime has been evolving over time. In the past, a lot of it was not so written. However, we, for the first time, put enacted our Tax Procedures Act. Okay, Now, procedures are all codified in law. Yeah, and that to a large extent will help us in terms of where we're having tax disputes, processes, and what a taxpayer needs to do, and also the obligation that the commissioner has. And then in addition to that, 
we now have a very fully empowered tax appeals tribunal. That is a court that specifically deals with tax matters. When it comes to tax policy, under our regime, you'll find every year there are changes that come in law and in the taxes. Mm -hmm. So at times it may not be so certain for an investor. So you find there have been changes quite some time. Of course, this has created a lot of uh, noise. And then recently, government just published a tax policy paper mm -hmm. to guide these processes going forward. So there are steps towards making sure that our tax processes mm -hmm. and procedures are quite consistent and certain because that's what an investor and even a practitioner you require. Obviously, obviously. That's what they're looking for. For yeah. a developing country, a lot of our government projects, both recurrent and development budgets, are driven by tax revenue. I yeah? see. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think what is important for an investor and to all our clients to know is when you have a good tax advisor, you will always enlighten you on the rights and the processes under the tax procedure and what you need to do and at what time so that then uh, you're quite certain and then your business is well protected from uncertain environment. Hmm. Maybe last general question about tax policy. I mean, currently the world is discussing the reallocation of taxing right on the one hand with respect to digitalized services, which is called under the OECD so-called pillar one and the global minimum taxation, which would be pillar two. And there's a big discussion in the tax world and also in the newspapers about this reallocation of taxing rights between countries, between industrialized countries and developing countries, between the U.S and between continental Europe and the rest of the world. What is your prediction? How will Kenya position itself in this reallocation debate? Kenya is one of those countries that has not signed up or even uh, locally implemented the recommendations. And the reason is that in the past in two years, Kenya already implemented uh, this withholding taxes on digital and electronic e-commerce. On a unilateral basis. Yeah. Yes. And that is not within the OECD framework. So th there's that debate that is there. But what I want to predict is that, I mean, the world has become a small village. And as long as you're a player within that village, you don't have a choice. Most of the developing countries are afraid and in terms of they, they feel that maybe the, the rate may not be sufficient enough, especially if some of the multinationals are generating good revenue from these uh, young economies. But I think a compromise will be reached and then you'll find that everyone will be on board at some point. Mm -hmm. George, towards the end now, uh, we'll play a little game. I will name two terms each and you have to answer spontaneously which one you prefer, maybe with a short explanation. Are you ready? Yes. First move Mover or follower? I prefer a mover. You must take the initiative to be ahead and uh, you must also be innovative. Yeah. And it is more challenging. And then it also forces you to nurture and train others. I see. It also keeps you on the hop generally. It's more of an attitude rather than a description. Yes, yes, yes. Second pair of words, South Africa or Zanzibar? I will choose uh, South Africa because Zanzibar only offers the beach, you know, the beach coast to life. South Africa, I will get both. Okay, I can go to Cape Town, still get the beach. Then I can go to Joburg, get another kind of scenery. I can go all the way to the northern part, the Limpopo side and see another part of the world. So, I mean, it, it gives you more variety, especially if you're visiting. Yeah, but they are all good. <laughs> Third pair, early bird or sleepy head? Early bird. Yeah. The beauty with an early bird is that you're able to accomplish so many things when your energy levels also are still very, uh, very high. Yeah. That's then, true. Yeah, and then you're generally also fairly fresh. Yeah. That works for me. And last pair, we talked about Kilimanjaro Mountain before our recording started. And so I hope these words also work in Kenya and not only in Tanzania. So the pair is pole pole or pole position. <laughs> <laughs> that is in Tanzania, it means slowly, slowly when they walk up the mountain. <laughs> yeah, pole position is uh, to be at the front, is it? <laughs> so we come back to the first mover element. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. It's more or less the same. I'd rather be on pole position. Very good. Although pole pole also has its advantages. <laughs> In Swahili, we have a common Swahili saying that says, Mwenda pole hajikwai, meaning if you have patience like a tortoise and you go slow enough, 
you will really get accidents. Uh, I'm like the person who rushes. <laughs> very true, very true. <laughs> <laughs> who rushes all over without looking left, right, center. Thanks for sharing that, George. Now, the very, very final question, of course, also for you. What makes Rödel and Partners special for you? The kind of setup we have here, and I also see it globally, is that firstly, you're able to support clients in all the possible service areas that they may require. So it's a one-stop shop for our clients. And it's not just good for the clients, but also for our staff and ourselves, because then when you interact with, let's say you're from tax, you're able to work in different teams with colleagues uh, on the legal side, accounting side, and even audit side. So you grow better as a professional. And then you are able to support the clients the right way because then you have that experience on what happens on each specific area. So for me, that is uh, very critical. Secondly, another uh, important aspect is that the kind of clients we support are clients who are generally family-owned businesses that are trying to go all over the world. And you'll find that this kind of business has fit in very well with our model because we are, as Roland Partner, we are not so big. At the same time, we are not so small. We kind of fit in to our clients' requirements. And obviously that means we are always available to support our clients and then we work with them. So we do from the smallest, you call them the bread and butter kind of service all the way to the full spectrum, the complicated advisories. Yeah, so you walk with yes. the clients and you grow with the clients. So that is um, yes, yes. something that really is special to us. Well, thank you very much, George. Nothing to add. Welcome. Thanks for being on the show. It was a pleasure talking to you and dear listeners, dear friends and clients. This was Tax Unplugged, a podcast series by Rödel and Partner. And at least now you all know whom to call when you're seeking tax advice with respect to Kenya. George Maynard is the person to go to. That's all for the moment. All the best and talk to you soon. Das war die neueste Folge von Tax Unplugged, dem Rödel und Partner Steuerpodcast. Rödel und Partner ist der agile Kümmerer für mittelständisch geprägte Weltmarktführer. Besuchen Sie uns auf rödel.de oder auch auf rödel.de-steuerpodcast. Erfahren Sie mehr über die Kolleginnen und Kollegen und über unseren internationalen und interdisziplinären Beratungsansatz. Fragen und Themenvorschläge können Sie auch an steuerpodcast.rödel.com richten. Bis bald zur nächsten Folge von Text Unplugged.